Time for us to get interactive, and Mapito Sabidi has been watching the trends all day. Hi, Maps. Hello, Daniel. This is like so awkward to you <laughs> at this time. I mean, you know, I super know. morning, you know. Right until yeah. the super evening, if I could call it that. Hey, no, I, all right, you know how to join the conversation. The evening has some sort of vibe, though, don't you think? Yeah, it's like nice, it's chilled. Well, it's Friday, oh. <laughs> but you know how to join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. We're joining you on TV. Send us a WhatsApp message on 055 815 Now, it's been eight days of sitting of the Emil Short Commission of Inquiry. The three-member committee has been sitting since Thursday, February 14th, to probe into issues regarding the violent clashes that occurred at the Awayaso West Wagon Pulse. Now, we've heard numerous accounts of what happened. In the beginning, many were skeptical about the work of the commission, but with several accounts given, evidence presented, and many talking on social media, what are your impressions of the short leg commission of inquiry so far? Uh, for me, it's just a uh, kind of window dressing because someone has confirmed that he sent the people. So why don't you just call that person for him to give the Ghanaians details? I think um, it's okay for a commission like that to be set up to look into the matter because what happened on the day of the election at Ayawasu West Wagon is, is not good at all, it's nothing to write home about. So I think it's good for the commission to look into it so that we, lo we look for the culprits and bring them to book. I think um, the commission need to um, do the investigation for people to know where the truth is coming from. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's good to know. I think they should do justice to what happened. They should bring out the, the, those who committed the crime. Um, I think it will help the nation. So far as there is um, something like that, whilst we have a committee like that, it can help the, 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 the nation. Yeah, because sometimes something will happen and we will not know where the source is coming from. So when we have those kind of people, we will, we will, they will get to the root from the source where it came from and then we will know what, what to do. Well, to me, it's profound. It's a very good thing to do. It's just that our politicians must take it easy when it comes to elections. Because some people might be hurt some people might die and who are the winners in quotes coming to rule when they are wounded when they are dead who are the politicians coming to rule let's go to our facebook page and see what you have been saying we'll start with a pim who says also there has been so many contradictions in the testimony of some officials the lies are just too much. And Sir Galaxy says, at Donut headquarters, so far so good. But I think the video circulating on social media is enough evidence for the perpetrators to be brought to book uh, rather than setting up committee to take per diems and allowances from taxpayers' money. A few others here. Entry Ado says, it's just a waste of taxpayers' money. Government should empower security agencies to deal with those militants. Recently was a good example. That's the only solution. No long talks. Clay Gold got time. Clay got time says it's been cover-ups and fabrications here and there. The most disgusting was the appearance of SWAT Commander Samuel Azugu. Azugu was quite famous last week, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, Ghanaians are gradually losing interest and respect for our security forces because of their glaring political biases and affiliations. We must do everything to ban or outlaw political vigilante groups. Abu Bakar Delan says, we are not serious with issues as a nation. Hmm. This NDC and MPP are the cause of Ghana's problems. God save Ghana. Let's go to Yao Edu, who says it's been very impressive. And Henny Metal says they are on course. Mash Taylor says, clearly, it's po very political and needless. Now, to other stories that have been trending, there have been plans to execute a project where some foreign 
and local private operators will take over some basic public schools. But National Association of Graduate Teachers are stressing this is, not, uh, this is the wrong thing to do. The government has justified privatization plan of some public schools, insisting the public can no longer trust government to run the schools. Now, let's see what you have to say about this. Personally, I don't know why Nagrats, or I don't really see the concern Nagrats, Nats, and other uh, teacher unions are raising. Because when they talk about um, it being privatized, listening to the uh, PRO of the Ministry of Education, he indicated that. They are, and the funding is also from the World Bank. So at the end of the day, we have nothing to lose, really. And we all know our system. Usually the private uh, institutions do much more better than the public institutions. So they are trying to see how this will work, just for 50 schools. And then if it works out well, and it's, I don't really see, it's not like the teachers are going to be sacked or anything, but a private uh, person will be handling the affairs of the whole institution. So there's nothing, I see nothing wrong with it. And it's, it should be, it's, it's a call in the right direction. My very first question is, if it's being privatized, does it mean those kids are going to pay fees? Because already, I can't remember some years ago, we were not paying fees, it was levies. So if you privatize this whole basic education, it means that now there's going to be fee paying. People have to pay an amount of fees. And is the school feeding program still going to take place? That's my second question. So I, I don't see the essence of you coming up with a free education system and now trying to privatize the basic education. You are going to limit people from going to the school and which will also have a bigger effect on the secondary schools as well and the universities. Now, you've privatized the junior, the junior education system and we are expecting the senior highs to be free, free education. That won't work. In every country, basic school should be free, even when you can't afford. We, we need the basics. If you decide to privatize the SHS, um, the senior high, um, the university, and then the junior high, that one is okay. But for the basic, everyone should be entitled to basic education. It should be our right. All right, you know how to join the conversation over the weekend on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll join you on TV. Send us any WhatsApp message, picture of the day, video of the day on 055-815-7074. I am a pizza CBD.